Hey there, movie fans. We are live on Oscar nomination morning for FYC. What an exciting morning it is. Thank you so much for joining us. Joining me, as always, for FYC, I'm Scott Mance, joined by the amazing Perry Nemiroff and the mighty Jeff Snyder. What a morning for Oscar nominations. Perry, just give me your give me your your initial reaction. What did you think? What just happened? <laughs> there, I know we always get surprises every single year. But this, what? I mean, can someone do the math? Was this the most amount of like legitimate surprises that we actually have gotten in recent years because i can't remember categories being thrown you know i don't want to say out of whack because it's deserving nominations but there are just so many uh i guess guild and other organization nominations that are just not quite lining up with what we got today but my outlook on it you guys know how i feel about this season i just love celebrating film and dewey's here to celebrate with us too oh, Dewey! really the fact that we're seeing so many different nominations from body to body right now is just making me kind of happy because it means we get to celebrate more work. So that is my positive spin on today. I love your positive spin. It certainly <laughs> makes our jobs easier doing FYC. Jeff, what did you think of this morning? Wow. I didn't think that there was anything too crazy. Oh, um, come on. <laughs> what? I mean, I, we talked about the possibility of drive my car getting into the field or, or that being a, a favorite. Uh, that was my choice, bud. <laughs> you're, you're right. Oh, I'm going to give you a lot of credit today I, I was way off uh, I, I think but um yeah in general i mean other than a couple of acting nominations there wasn't anything like oh my god how did that happen um, i think it just goes to show that the precursors all these guild awards they don't really mean that much in the scheme of things well that i completely agree with especially when it comes to the sag awards but let's get right to it with the best picture nominations first of all we have Power of the Dog leading the way with 12 nominations. Next, you have Dune with 10 nominations, including one mighty big snub that we are going to get to. Then we have West Side Story and Belfast with seven nominations and King Richard with six nominations. Drive My Car, a record four nominations for Japan. Also, Coda, Licorice Pizza, Don't Look Up, Nightmare Alley. So first, Perry, any big surprises in these Best Picture nominations? I had definitely come to the conclusion that Drive My Car had a very, very good chance of getting in this race. So I can't call that the biggest surprise. Nightmare Alley getting the bump it needed to get into this group. Yeah, that shocked me a little. And, you know, I'm not going to repeat myself. You guys know how I feel about the movie, but you also know how I feel about Guillermo del Toro. So I can't not be happy for him. And I oh, also yeah. know a lot of people out there are clearly very enthusiastic about Nightmare Alley. I will say, you know, in my brain and way of processing this, Drive My Car and Nightmare Alley bumped out something like Being the Ricardos. And considering how well Being the Ricardos did in some of the other categories... That does surprise me a little bit that that movie didn't get into this one. Jeff, what's your take? What are the surprises and snubs for Best Picture? I, think, I mean, Drive My Car was a surprise because I really didn't think that the Academy was going to go for it. I thought it was just going to be a critics thing. I was proven wrong. Nightmare Alley, I, I did change my mind at the 11th hour last night. I tweeted that you may very well see Nightmare Alley slip in. Uh, and I think it, yeah, it, it ended up bumping Ricardo's or, or Tick Tick Boom, uh, which just never caught on uh, with with the membership. Well, I got to say, first of all, Tick Tick Boom, I feel like all the attention for Tick Tick Boom is going right. to sure. its lead actor. So, of course, Andrew Garfield was nominated. And also, Lynn Manuel Miranda is, is actually nominated for Best Song for Uncanto. And if he actually wins, he would get an Oscar. He already has an Emmy, a Grammy, and a Tony, so he'd be an EGOT. Uh, but uh, it is definitely uh, a, a snub uh, in the sense that I thought Tick, Tick, Boom was going to get nominated. I thought Tragedy of Macbeth could get nominated. Mm -hmm. uh, sorry, No Time to Die in Spider-Man never had a chance to get nominated. But with Steven Spielberg's West Side Story getting nominated for Best Picture, that means that Steven Spielberg is the most nominated filmmaker to have now 11 films as a producer nominated for Best Picture. So that 
is 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 great. So way to go, Steven Spielberg. Can uh, I point uh, out one tick tick boom thing before yep. we move? I'm obsessed with the movie. I'm heartbroken that it's not in the best picture category, but I know we're not going to get to all the technical categories today. It was nominated for uh, an editing Oscar, and that made me really happy because I do think the editing in that movie is key to it being able to jump from Jonathan Larson's real world experience to the dreamlike scenarios to his actual performance. And I think they very much deserve to be honored in that category. So I'm glad it got another nomination over there. And, and wow. also, you know, being, being the Ricardos not nominated for Best Picture and it also not nominated for another award that I re that I think we all felt was definitely it was going to get nominated for. And we'll get to that. What were we going to say there, Jeff? I was just relieved that Coda got in because it's a movie that didn't have the below the line support that a lot of right. these contenders have. But I think that that goes to show how highly people think of this movie, even outside of the crafts. All right, let's move on to Best Director. The nominees are Jane Campion for Power of the Dog, Kenneth Branagh for Belfast, Steven Spielberg for West Side Story, Whew. <laughs> Paul Thomas Anderson for Licorice Pizza, and Rasuki Hamaguchi for Drive My Car. Jeff, what did you think of the Best Director nominations? Snubs, surprises. I mean, obviously, Denis Villeneuve is a big snub. Um, but then again, to me, he only directed half a movie. It's a gorgeous-looking movie, and, and he did a great job wrangling all the different elements. But to me, it just didn't feel like a complete film or story. So uh, I think that there was a little bit of worry that it was going to be Spielberg that, that f uh, fell out for Hamaguchi. And, and I'm glad that Steven made it in because I do think he did a great job with this uh, West Side Story remake. Perry, what's your take on Best Director? I'm so tempted to repeat the speech I gave last week about why Dune is still a full movie. It's just the first <laughs> part of a larger story. But well, I'll leave I, I that agree. I'll leave that out of the conversation right now. I really am sad that Denis Villeneuve did not get honored here. And I'm extremely surprised because as they were rolling through the nominations this morning, it was one Dune nomination after the next. And I just thought it was building to that it made sense and you know all throughout the the predictions process I kept bumping him up and up and up the list I thought it was a sure thing today I had basically come to the conclusion that yeah I knew the popular answer to get bumped out here was Steven Spielberg but I thought maybe it was going to be Paul Thomas Anderson but then the yeah. second he was announced I'm like uh-oh Steven Spielberg's gonna go and then Steven Spielberg was in and I was shocked that Denis was the one to lose out on this honor. Uh, I was definitely shocked that Denis Villeneuve's name was not mentioned for Best Director. That was my one of my, one of my many whoa oh my god moments for a snub. But uh, uh, you you know uh, Adam McKay also did not get nominated for Don't Look Up. I did not think he was going to get nominated for Best Director for Don't Look Up. But Jane Campion with her nomination for Power of the Dog became the first woman to be nominated for best director for the second time. She was nominated for the first time for best director for the piano. And uh, if she wins and she is the favorite to win best director, she'll be the second woman to win an Academy award for best director after Catherine Bigelow for the hurt locker. And also worth noting that Kenneth Branagh has now with Belfast, with the, the showing here and the Oscar nominations this morning, he has now been nominated in seven different categories. So he holds the record for being nominated in the most categories uh, throughout his career. He beat George Clooney, Alfonso Cuaron, and even Walt Disney, who were nominated in six different categories. And he, and he could have the number one movie this weekend. So it'd be a, a big week for uh, Ken. Wow. That's a really good point. Oh, there's no Maybe. question that, that uh, Belfast and, and, and certainly West Side Story could benefit from these nominations this morning, this weekend at the box office. I certainly I hope. Death on the Nile. Yeah. Might, yeah. Might be a little bit of a stretch there, Jeff, but I'm rooting for it. I really like Death on the Nile. <laughs> Okay, let's move on to Best Actress. The very, very quickly, Mance. We do yeah. have a super chat that came in. I won't answer it now, but I want to note it. Charles Harkins, thank you so much for the support. It's greatly appreciated. Perry, have you seen or ever reviewed Drive My Car? Worst person in the world. Love to hear your thoughts. Call me crazy, but is the Best Actress race the most wide open? So I'll table my thoughts on those movies for, for a little bit, just so we can go through all the categories today. But let's address this question as we discuss this category. Absolutely. We're, All we're, right. we're, we're, I we're hand it back to you, Mance. 
We're going to head it to Best Actress right now. The nominees are Nicole Kibben for Being the Ricardos, Olivia Coleman for The Lost Daughter, Ha, Jessica Chastain for The Eyes of Tappy Faye in your face, <laughs> Snyder. Also, Penelope Cruz for Parallel Mothers. And just like we predicted last week on FYC, Kristen Stewart makes the cut for Spencer. Yes. Ah, yes. All right. First of all, Jeff. What do you think? Oh of the man, she went to Jeff first. I'm losing my mind this right is, now. This is, yeah, I know. I'm sorry, but the bet has to be addressed. I get it. <laughs> I really did not think Jessica Chastain was going to get in. Uh, so Scott Mance, well earned. You know, you are the sage. Yes, I am. <laughs> right. We are another bet. And you know, we are still early in award season. We could have another bet here. Uh, but Jeff, what else about best actress? Uh, I think, I, I think it's a done deal. I, I think actually Nicole Kidman has this kind of locked up. Uh, you know, I feel like Kristen Stewart just eked into this field. Same with Chastain, same with Penelope Cruz and Olivia Coleman. I don't think that they're going to give her another Oscar in, in, you know, two or three years or whatever. I think Nicole Kidman's kind of, it's been a long time since she's won. She got audiences back in the theaters with that AMC ad. I think it's hers. All right, wait, Perry, let's talk about the big, massive snub. Snub for Best Actress. I All I could think about right now is Kristen Stewart. <laughs> <laughs> okay, like my well, my, my brain has like fully gone in that direction. I am I'm so relieved. I refuse to give up on her. I know the stars weren't aligning in a way that made her as much of a lock as we thought at the beginning of the season, but I am so incredibly thrilled that she wound up getting this nomination and cannot express enough within the hour that we're going to do this show how much I think she deserves that nomination. She is absolutely phenomenal in that film. Not All right. only well, is she... What'd you, what'd you ask me now? A snub? Okay, wait, wait, I just want to say, Kristen Stewart, not only did she deserve that nomination after being snubbed by the SAG Awards and also the BAFTA Awards, which I don't really, you know, think that the BAFTAs have that much influence on the Oscars, but Kristen Stewart getting snubbed by the SAGs and now she gets nominated. Not only she nominated, did she, not only did Kristen Stewart make the cut, not only did she deserve to make the cut, but Perry and Jeff, out of all the Best Actress nominees and all of the Best Actor nominees, out of all 10 lead acting nominees, Kristen Stewart is the only first-time nominee. So, way to go, Kristen Stewart. Good. Congratulations. That's a, fun fact, Perry. That's, that's a good one. Perry, um, wait, 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 guys. We got to talk about Lady Gaga not getting oh nominated. Oh, my God. That's a Big freaking snub, Jeff. No, why? Why no, do you no, think it's, it's not, not a man. snub? He was never going no, that's to get a snub. in. I I feel like that is. I mean, that's we toss around the word snub a little inappropriately sometimes. It's <laughs> you know, it's meant to be used when someone is likely to get a nomination, and and then I mean, it's got an even stronger negative connotation than that. But Lady Gaga had hit the point where you know, if you wanted to create some sort of scorecard to assess someone's likelihood of getting an Oscar nomination, she had ticked a lot of those boxes. And I was starting to doubt the fact that I was pushing her down and down my list and I was having others rise. And in the end, I, I put her back on my list. I thought she was going to get that nomination today. I'm very surprised that she didn't, but I've also been hardcore rooting for Penelope Cruz and Penelope Cruz has been on the bubble this entire time. And I had kind of, you know, come to the conclusion that I got to suck it up and just, you know, accept the fact that she is less likely to get a nomination than certain other people vying for these particular nominations here. But I am beyond thrilled that she earned a spot in this category because she's another one who deserved it. I, I'm very, very enthusiastic about these five names we have here. I feel yeah. very, very good about this list right now. Uh, I, I have too. Jeff, what's your take on Lady Gaga? And Jeff, what is your take on even Jennifer Hudson being snubbed for respect? Yeah, you know, I, I nearly watched that on the flight last night, but <laughs> two and a half hours for, no, I, I was like, eh, I can't do this. Um, Kristen Stewart, I thought was, was excellent in Spencer. Uh, I am thrilled that she got the nomination. I just don't think... Oh God, you're kidding me. Uh, I just don't think that any of these, you know, precursors matter all that much. Like, oh, Lady Gaga checked all the boxes, but at the end of the day, this is a completely different voting body. The, um, the precursors do matter, 
but I feel like they definitely sure. have mattered a little matter. less. They're an indicator, but they don't matter. They don't like lead to, oh, someone they, voted no, no, for no, them. No, I'm going to vote them for that. They, I, okay, I, I'm going to go back to the human being conversation. First, I think they mm -hmm. matter in what we do with prognosticating who's going to get nomination and, and who is going to get a win. But also, literally everything that happens leading up to Oscar nomination voting plays a part in the narrative and the story that human beings who have human reactions to these stories respond to. So literally anything that happens between a release and the day that nomination voting closes could influence someone's opinion. No, we like no to matters. believe that all these things matters, but like what happened in the last three months for Jesse Plemons that resulted in this nomination? Nothing happened. Right, right. It just that's happened. That's because not, I mean, that's not necessarily Voters true. like a very small group of movies, right? And then they say, okay, these are the movies that I liked. Now I got to choose people who are in them, you know? Like, I, I, I wish that there were more outliers, like... Uh, but, whether it's Leto or, or, you know, Cooper, whoever, just like someone who was great in a movie that really didn't get a lot of awards attention. Well, part I, I do think part of that narrative isn't necessarily something happening in Jesse Plemons' case to give him the nudge to get the nomination, but it could be a more likely contender whose narrative didn't go the right way. I mean, perhaps for all I know, his SAG nomination put you know, a negative co uh, conversation. You know, I've I've been saying that he shouldn't get the nomination this year. Maybe someone out there was influenced by the fact that that kind of conversation was amplified due to his SAG nomination and that yeah. resulted in Jesse Plemons getting You're it. You're definitely right about the SAG thing with Kristen Stewart. I think that she benefited from being snubbed by SAG because then that put her in all the headlines where, Agreed. oh my God, we have to rectify this wrong. And so then they did. Well, I, I think that I goes it. for another... Uh, actress and supporting actress that we'll get to. Uh, also, I, I don't think these people were snubbed, but they were certainly uh, in the talks and maybe they, they were going to get nominated for lead actress were uh, Rachel Ziegler for West Side Story and Alana Haim for A Licorice Pizza. She's been everywhere, but you know what? Uh, you know, I, I'm very happy with these nominations for sure. Let's move on. Briefly, to... let's let's answer this question from Charles right here. Very quickly, which Best Actress nominee's movie would you watch first? Case Stu, Kidman, Coleman, Chastain, or Cruz? And which performance is the most rewatchable? I'll say Kristen Stewart because I've watched Spencer more than any other movie on this list. Uh, that's actually a really great choice, Perry. I, I'm with you on Kristen Stewart. I'm with you on Spencer, a movie that I think is is not getting the love as much as Stewart's performance is. The movie is not getting love. I think it's a terrific film, uh, uh, and I think it's a movie that will certainly – it's the most daring of these movies in which these actresses were nominated. Although, uh, I mean, I do like being the Ricardos and uh, just because I like movies about Hollywood and I love Lucille Ball. Jeff? I mean, I, I thought Nicole Kidman's was probably the most rewatchable. Uh, I'd like to spend another, you know, two hours watching her as Lucy. I, I don't know that I want to revisit Spencer or The Lost Daughter. Those aren't terribly rewatchable movies. Tammy Faye, same deal. I haven't seen Parallel Mothers, so I can't speak to Penelope Cruz, but well, I think that's the answer here. Penelope Cruz and Parallel Mothers are, are both great. Uh, let's uh, move on now to Best Actor. We have Will Smith for King Richard, Benedict Cumberbatch for Power of the Dog, Andrew Garfield for Tick, Tick, Boom, Denzel Washington for The Tragedy of Macbeth, Javier Bardem for Being the Ricardos, and all five of these lead actor nominations match the nominations for lead actor for the SAG Awards. And worth noting that because of Javier Bardem's nomination, because of uh, Penelope Cruz's nomination, you have a married couple nominated for, for Oscars this year, which I think is kind of cool. And also with Denzel's nomination, he is now the, with it's, it's his 10th nomination, nine for acting, one for producing. So his, he is the most nominated, a uh, black, uh, filmmaker and he uh beat his own record but uh jeff what did you think of the acting nominations any snubs or surprises here this is exactly how we thought it was going to go right these yeah. were the five that, that we picked i feel like denzel washington could get a nomination for reading a phone book uh, at this point <laughs> um I, I you know i i, I think the power of the dog showing today gives benedict a little bit more momentum but i i still think this is will smith's in a walk uh, particularly with Tick, Tick, Boom missing the best picture cut. Um, I, I mean, I think Garfield is, is fantastic, but I, I just think that Will Smith has this narrative where he's overdue. He's this huge movie star. Uh, and, and 
yeah, I, I just think he, he's going to get it. Uh, Perry? Yeah, I'm right there with Jeff right now. This has officially become Will Smith's award to lose. But, you know, we, like we nailed this category. I feel yeah. like on Gold Derby, I messed up my uh, my score because I insisted on putting Peter Dinklage, who I still would have loved to have seen score a nomination. But great list right here. This is this is what I thought it would probably be. Yeah, you know, all all these actors have have been nominated before. You know, a couple of them won. Uh, and uh, look, Peter Dinklage not getting nominated for Cyrano, I think, has more to do with the the uh, the just the surge in COVID because of Omicron hitting uh, right around the time that 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 Cyrano was supposed to have its premiere at the Academy Museum. Uh, its release date was pushed back. So even though people got their screeners, I just think that it's possible that not enough voters saw the film to appreciate Peter Dinklage's performance. Though, I mean, again, I mean, we nailed these five nominees on on uh, FYC, uh, and uh, I, I, I just, you know, I, I'm sorry for Peter Dinklage that that this that the 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 pandemic I, I think affected this. Let's move on. To supporting actress Ariana, we, we got a, we got another one, man. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, Wiley, it is very good to see you as always. Thank you for your support. Hey guys, this year's movie was a little underwhelming to to me, besides Tick Tick Boom. But I like to live through you, your guys' happiness. Also, my birthday is tomorrow, so thanks to you guys for getting me through the year. Big happy birthday to you, Wiley. We look forward to celebrating with you on Merry Hour this week. Happy, birthday, happy Wiley. birthday, Wiley. Thanks for joining us on FYC and on Perry's channel. Moving on to supporting actress. The nominees are Ariana DeBose for West Side Story. Anjan Yu Ellis for King Richard. Yes. Kirsten Dunst for The Power of the Dog. And then this is where it gets really tricky. The very first nominee's name that was mentioned this morning for the nominations because supporting actress was the first category we went to the very first name that you hear was like a what jesse buckley for the lost daughter what but deserving very very deserving and also judy dench for belfast what where we got we got a lot to talk about with this category yeah. here uh perry <laughs> Where to begin? Jesse Buckley. <laughs> I lost my mind yeah. when that was announced. I just did not see that coming whatsoever. I, You know how sensitive I've been about the whole mass conversation and the fact that it didn't get any acting, any nominations, period, is, is, is hurting still. But to have Jesse Buckley be one of the surprise nominations in this category made me so incredibly happy, not just because I think her work in The Lost Daughter is deserving, but I feel like you guys probably remember how enthusiastic I was about Wild Rose in particular. And yep. I thought she should have been nominated that year as well. So I'm kind of just bunching that all up right now and enjoying the celebration for those two movies, but also her entire body of work. She is hands down one of the most talented actors we have right now. And to see her get this kind of recognition is just like so well-deserved and thrilling to me because I feel like this is the kind of thing that could, you know, catapult her to like an even higher level of stardom and just basically ensure that we are going to see even more of Jesse Buckley on the screen going forward. Well, with Jesse Buckley's nomination for supporting actress and, uh, and of course, Olivia Coleman's nomination for lead actress. This is like the year uh, that uh, both Kate Winslet and Gloria Stewart were both nominated in the same year for playing the same character in different ages for Titanic. So that was a very nice surprise. Perry, I'm with you. I loved Wild Rose, and I think Jesse Buckley. While not enough people were really talking about her getting a nomination, she is so deserving. But then you also have you also have a nomination for supporting actress for Belfast, but it is not the nomination that we were expecting, not the nomination that we were all, you know, putting down on Gold Derby and talking about here on FYC. Uh, Jeff, what is your take first on Judy Dench's surprise nomination and Katrina Balfe's Surprise snub. Again, I didn't think Belfast was all that. I didn't think the female performances were all that. Um, I I was surprised that that, that uh, Balf was snubbed, um, just because it seemed like she had the more prominent 
supporting role. Same thing with Jamie Dornan. And I know that they went with, uh, with Hines there. Um, I think Judy Dench is just a, a very well-respected member of the community. And, and when people see that she's up for something, you know, they kind of just ch check her name off. Uh, Jesse Buckley, Perry couldn't, ha you know, have said it any better, or I couldn't have said it any better than Perry did. She is an excellent actress. Again, didn't really do much for me in The Lost Daughter, but, she, you know, it, it's two halves of the same coin, right? Like, to, to create that character, you need the, the Olivia Coleman and, and the flashbacks for a, a full uh, three-dimensional character. So I, I can see how she got in there. I still think this is between Ariana DeBose and Kirsten Dunst, and I don't think it's a lock the way that you guys think it is. Okay, well, 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 Perry, what did you think uh, of of you know Katrina Bath getting snubbed? I was, I was, that was another like what you know moment for me. How about you? Again, I'm with Jeff. I'm not as enthusiastic about Belfast as many others are. So you know, I don't know how how much like I care in terms of that. I. I think more so than anything, my heart breaks a little for Katrina Balfe because I know awards aren't the most important thing in the world. And I know she's totally fine and she's super talented and she's going to get a whole lot of other wonderful opportunities over the course of her career. But given how the conversation has gone the past couple of months, I have to imagine it's got to hurt, even though you're celebrating another cast member getting a nomination. And that's right. wonderful. I, I, I genuinely feel a little bad for her. And I just imagine there's disappointment there and it makes my heart hurt what about uh you know ruth nega for passing and kate blanchard for nightmare alley they were both nominated for a sag award jeff do you think that there are these are snubs or do you think that uh well justice was served and the right people got nominated i swear there is a garbage truck <laughs> coming every three minutes i don't know yeah. what's going on in Venice. forgive me uh i was surprised marley matlin didn't get, i mean if we're nominating jesse buckley i was surprised marley matlin didn't get in um, no, Kate Blanchett, I don't think ever had a chance. The, the Ruth Nega thing, I, I did think that, that she could have snuck in there. Uh, but I guess that movie just never really registered with, with the membership. Um, yeah. 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 I was, I was thrilled though for Andrew Ellis. Like we can celebrate that. Yes. We all thought that she uh, should have gotten in. She got uh, snubbed by SAG. And I was delighted to hear her name called out this morning. I was so pumped. I was so happy that Anjan Ulis got nominated. Perry, you think, uh, you know, Ruth Nega, Kate Blanchett, uh, were you were you disappointed that either one of them did not get nominated? Or were you, like, just happier that everyone else did? Oh, no. I'm sticking with the same conversation I've been having with Nightmare Alley. I just, I just don't. Like, in my personal opinion, it is not at the same level as many of these other films. And even though Cate Blanchett was one of my favorite parts of that movie, I don't think it was an Academy Award nomination worthy performance. But the Ruth Necka one does surprise me because, you know, with the with the on the bubble fourth and fifth slots, that that's always been a name and an incredible performance that I've been considering. And I, I did think that she was going to get in there. So, you know, I'm a little I'm a little bummed, mainly because passing didn't get any recognition at all from the Academy. And I think it's a phenomenal film. Yeah, yeah, it's a it's a great film. So Judy Dench, she has her eighth nomination, uh, her eighth nomination. And she, of course, she won for supporting actress for 1998's Shakespeare in Love. Moving on to supporting actor. And I know there is a conversation. Perry is very, very uh, excited to have. What do we do? Hold the phone there, Mr. <laughs> Snyder. Uh, the nominees for supporting actor are Troy Kotzer for Coda, Cody Smith McPhee for The Power of the Dog, Jesse Plemons for The Power of of the dog, uh, Kieran Hines for Belfast, and whoa, J.K. Simmons, Simmons for the Ricardos. Uh, first of all, Perry, man, Jared Leto, talk to me. <laughs> the, re the relief, Admi <laughs> admittedly. I feel like I could always fully embrace me rooting for someone to get a nomination. I, I struggle to to celebrate someone not getting honored a little. Like it, it does, it bothers me a little. And it bothers me when I bring it up with Nightmare Alley too. But like, again, this is this is what it's about. It's, it's about honoring some of the best of the best every single year. And, you know, I think Jared Leto's performance in House of Gucci could have been great in a different film. But again, what he did just didn't fit into that particular film for me. And like, I'm, 
it, it, and it also might be bolstered by the fact that I think the little things conversation had my head spinning too. I, I don't think he should have gotten the recognition for that, that he did. So having this come on the heels of that was just like, it was boggling my brain and I don't care. Again, we're going back to all of the signs that, you know, point someone in the direction of getting a nomination. I was not, but I refused to let myself to buy into any of that. Like I, I stuck to my opinion. Yep. You did. And you here did. we are. And no here nomination. we are. Go Perry. No I should have listened to you for sure. Especially on gold derby. Jeff, what's your take on Jared Leto not getting nominated and what's your take on JK Simmons getting nominated? I've got a lot of feelings about this category in particular. Okay. Of course you do. <laughs> Jared Leto totally robbed. Uh, but you know what? I get it, Perry. I get it that, that, that it's not for everybody that his performance maybe stuck out a little like a sore thumb in that film, even though I personally loved it. I get it. Bradley Cooper and Licorice Pizza, we're going to overlook this guy now. Or Jesse Plemons, who like may have well not even have been in the movie. I thought he was total invisible wallpaper. Okay? Uh, I, I, but here's what I'll say. Him getting nominated, I hope now leads to a split vote with Cody Smith McPhee and that allows Troy Kotzer for Coda to get the win. I think that Jesse's nomination here could very well hurt Cody allowing Troy to win. Well, well, what I think about uh, about Jesse Plemons showing up here for with a surprise nomination for Power of the Dog is just another indication of the immense support of Power of the Dog. Of course, leading the way with 12 nominations and, of course, everyone's talking about uh, Jane Campion being the one to beat for Best Director. But it's very possible now that Power of the Dog could be the one to beat for Best Picture. There is a lot of support for Power of the Dog. And as much I do like Belfast. And I love King Richard. And, I, of course, you know, uh, of course, I love Coda. I mean, that was my favorite. But I just... I think that there's even more support now. There's even more of a chance that Power of the Dog could be the one to be for Best Picture. Perry. Okay. Yeah, I have lots of thoughts. I'll I'll loop this one in from Jonathan. I would love to hear your prediction for the Best Picture winner and main actor and actress category. I'm going to keep this to our conversation that we're having right now, though. So what I think is going to happen with all the support for Power of the Dog is I think Jane Campion is going to get Best Director, but then something else is going to take Best Picture. So didn't quite answer your question there, Jonathan, but thank you for the support. And I answered some of it. Um, with these other nominations here, I was about to say I fear Jeff is right that Jesse Plemons being in the category is going to make Cody Smith McPhee a less likely win, but I also wouldn't mind seeing Troy Kotzer win. So oh. I feel like no matter what, I win, which is wonderful. But I, I also will push back on Jesse Plemons not even needing to be in that movie because I'll I'll fully admit when I thought about that film after the fact. I didn't think Jesse Plemons was going to be in this conversation. And I also didn't think he was as deserving as others for this honor. But the more I think about it, I, I have a feeling it just comes from the fact that he's so heavily involved in the beginning of the movie. And then the focus of the film shifts. I mean, it's just, it's the nature of the story, but what he gives that movie at the beginning and how he gets things rolling with that story. And then how strong his performance is, at the beginning, how it sets the foundation for everything that happens after. I mean, it, it's it is a vital supporting performance to that overall narrative. There's well, there's absolutely no denying that. that. All right. Well, first of all, Troy Kotzer, I, I think, is the front runner to win. His nomination uh, it, it represents uh, he's the, the it's the second time since uh, Children of a Lesser God that a deaf actor got nominated. Children of a Lesser God. Uh, Marley Matlin won that award. Marley Matlin plays his wife in Coda. So, you know, there's that. But I don't think that Cody Smith McPhee's chances of winning are hurt by Jesse Plemons getting nominated. Because I still think that between the two, Cody Smith McPhee is still the like the, the more favored performance in Power of the Dog. But yeah. I do think, and I've always felt, that Troy Kotzer's performance uh, in a movie that I felt got overlooked in other ways. Of course, I thought Amelia Jones should have been nominated for lead actress, but you know, what are you going to do? But I do, uh, um, Man, get... just to back the point you just made, remember the conversation we were having last year, actually with, uh, Daniel Kaluuya and Lakeith Stanfield. Uh, was it, uh, was that, yeah, they were right. both, they were both supporting and we were, 
We were fearful that Lakeith getting in the category would take away from Kaluuya's possibilities of winning. Well, that's right, right, and that didn't happen because he he won. Uh, but also, just just real quick before we move on, uh, Jamie Dornan uh, getting snubbed. Uh, I mean, is it a snub? I mean, he didn't get the SAG award. Uh, Jeff is. I, 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 I know you're not. A, I think it's a snub. Yeah, I do. I mean, I, I was just surprised that Plemons got in over him. Perry. That Plemons got in over who? Dornan, because we were talking about the Belfast boys. We weren't talking about the dog. No, I mean, I didn't think we were going to have a scenario where Kieran Hines and, um, oh my God, why am I having a brain fart? Uh, Jamie Dornan. (laughs) I, I did not think that they were both going to get in. And I think Kieran Hines was always the favorite of the two. Yeah, I felt the well. That's the way my brain's been processing this all along. So I always like, had him on the edge. Well, well, like, well Perry, we, we talked about that last time, Perry. You and I were yeah. definitely favoring Kieran Hines over Jamie Dornan. No, but like, what about where did J.K. Simmons come from? Like, why isn't Dornan in there over him? Like, I get if you take Cooper and Leto out, but like, where did J.K. Simmons come from? There, wait, wait, there's wait. clearly a lot of enthusiasm for for being the Ricardos. And- it's there. It is there because being the Ricardos did not get nominated for Best Picture. It didn't get nominated for Best Director. Not that anyone thought it would. No. But it didn't get nominated for, for screenplay. screenplay, which is a big well, – that's, that's, a, that's yeah. another big That's stuff. the head scratcher to me. <laughs> uh, you know, they're for original screenplay. So and sense. speaking of which, let's move on to uh, original screenplay. The nominees are Belfast, Licorice Pizza, King Richard, uh, Don't Look Up, and The Worst Person in the World, which is an amazing movie I saw last year. I love that film. Uh, But the snub here is definitely being the Ricardos. If anyone's going to get a screenplay nomination, it's got to be Aaron Sorkin. He won uh, an Academy Award for his screenplay for uh, the social network. And of course he's a, an Emmy winner. And I mean, I, I mean, he, I wish he would write everything. I just think he's an amazing writer, Jeff, that this is a big snub. Don't you think it's definitely a big snub, but it's not like this is Aaron Sorkin's best work. I mean, I didn't understand why he chose to focus on communism and being the Ricardos. I don't know why that became the dominant theme of the movie. Well, well, I thought that was interesting. I didn't know that about Lucille Ball, that, that she had to deal with all the, you know, the, uh, the, 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 you know, the witch hunt, of uh, of the Red Scare, I, uh, I thought that was interesting. You go to see that movie for the drama between Lucy and Desi and their marriage and how it affected the show and the co-stars. The communism thing was just an awful, awful. Uh, I I disagree. I thought that was really interesting. I and you did have true. all the stuff with uh, with Lucy and Desi. The movie covered a lot. Perry, what do you think? The, ad- the addition of of all of what was going on in being the Ricardos felt like the point to me. It's like. Look, look at how like, like crazy and stressful and filled with like pressure that situation. I feel like you needed multiple issues for her to deal with in order for that movie to be as, you know, intense as it felt. I mean, it really did feel like a week in their life, a week on, on that particular set where their empire literally could have crumbled. And I think that comes a lot from the fact that there was so much going on and, you know, bringing up the, the screenplay nomination and also JK Simmons's nomination. I think that Aaron Sorkin's screenplay well supported him getting the nomination because another For thing sure. he does really well in that screenplay, yep. if he get in addition to Lucy and Desi, he gives his supporting cast members really meaningful arcs. Agreed they are extremely completely. valuable to what Lucy and Desi go through in the movie, but the story means something to them as individuals. And I do understand that some characters need to have less screen time than others, especially when the movie is called Being the Ricardos. But they all they all went through meaningful experiences in that it movie. It was a true ensemble. I, I completely agree. Sorkin's right. great at dialogue, and, and J.K. Simmons is great at delivering that dialogue. He's a lot, a lot of like quippy back and forths and one-liners and stuff, so I think that's why he got it. But this All is right. a really strong group of nominees, don't, yeah. you, don't you think? Like, Well, yeah, I, especially adapted screenplay where the nominees are Power of the Dog, Coda, Lost Daughter, Dune, and Drive My Car. I think those are the ones that we were all going for. I don't think there are any surprises or, in adapted Original screenplay, screenplay way stronger than adapted screenplay this year. Way Agreed. stronger. Agreed, but adapted screenplay. This is who I who I anticipated getting nominated. Perry, what do you think for adapted screenplay? I I think all ten nominees are excellent. It's like as sad as I am about being the Ricardos getting bumped out. 
Like, what am I, what am I complaining about in that category? And as far as best adapted goes, the one that I'm most enthusiastic about is Coda. I just want to see Coda win everything at this point. Please, I do too. I want to see, uh, please, I want to see Coda win something. I mean, it's it, so different than all the other nominees, which are long and boring. That, well, I'm not going to, I'm not going to emphasize the long and boring, but Coda being so different could boost its chances for a win. All right, let's move on to best animated feature. No mm -hmm. surprises here. Encanto, Flea, Luca, the Mitchells versus the Machines. Perry, I take it. I you? take back my earlier comment. This was the most predictable category of the bunch, not yeah. best actor. I mean, this no, is, for sure. Like, and we, also, we've been the movie, these five titles for how long now? Perry, I know you love Mitchells versus the Machines. My favorite of these nominated movies for animated feature is Raya and the Last Dragon. I'm just so happy it got in there. Uh, I, I, I mean, these are. This is definitely the most predictable of uh, of all. 23 Oscar nominated uh, categories, Jeff, what'd you say? Uh, yeah, this was pretty predictable. I don't know where this 11th hour flea may miss out on international and documentary and animation. There were, I, I read so many articles where that was posed as a possibility. Oh and of course it got into all three yep. because it's great. It was easily one of the top 10 movies of last year. Uh, I, I, I hope that it wins this category. I don't know if it will because it's not, you know, traditionally animated, Personally, I loved Luca, but I, I, Mitchell's versus the Machines was very good. This is going to be a tough category to predict an actual winner in. Mm -hmm. uh, um, I love Luca as well. I'm going. I want Mitchell's to win. I'm going Encanto. the The Encanto, probably. the Encanto fan base right now is just too strong, and yeah. I've also become totally obsessed with it. And again, I mean, there is a chance uh, for Lin Manuel Miranda to uh, to become that EGOT, which would be phenomenal. Moving on to best documentary, really, feature. really briefly, Mance Gasper yep. is here just to tell us Kristen Stewart gave the best performance this year. Gasper, I agree with you. She was yes, thank you, Gasper. Moving on to best documentary feature, the nominees are Ascension, Attica, which I love that movie, Flea, like you mentioned, Jeff, Summer of Soul, I love that movie too. Writing with Fire. Go ahead, Jeff. Where is the rescue? I what know, happened to I know. the rescue? That's the biggest so number the whole it. day for me. A great, yeah. great movie. It was uh, in my top three or four, I think, uh, last year. And I was stunned that it wasn't in here. Um, as the nominees stand, I got to go with Flea. I, I, I just don't. Summer of Soul is like a feat of editing to me, not a feat of filmmaking. That's what you said. I remember, Jeff, that's what you said about Apollo 11. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, Questlove did a great job editing that together, but like, you're going to tell me that's a better movie than Flea? Come on. Well, uh, listen, I agree uh, co completely. The Rescue was a phenomenal movie, but uh, uh, you know that they, that they won the you know the filmmakers won their Oscar for Free Solo. Maybe they thought, okay, let's give someone else a chance. I don't know, but The Rescue uh, was. I thought I thought the stakes were much 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 higher, and the story was so much more fascinating. That should have been the movie for for them for Jimmy and Chai. Uh, but Perry, what did you think of Best Doc? feature i watched all the wrong movies to prep for this the only ones that i watched that were actually nominated were flea and summer of soul uh, i wouldn't mind seeing i wouldn't mind seeing flea win at this point without having seen the other three just because i think it's an excellent film but i i really don't understand the first wave uh, the first wave and also the rescue not being on here because, you right. know, the rescue, as you guys have just said, is is a, an incredible, incredible film and story. And like my brain can't process how they made that movie. And also, you know, the free solo hype. I thought that that was going to give them the nudge they need to get a guaranteed nomination here. But also with first wave, I'm I'm a little surprised. I found that to be an overwhelmingly powerful documentary. I know we're at a point where. You know, we don't necessarily want to focus on COVID. We want it to be over. But that is a movie that really highlights what frontline workers put on the line to help people. And I, I'm just really surprised that, you know, given our situation right now and what people are risking to save others, that is something that would have been pushed into the nomination group this year. And I'm a little I'm disappointed that it's not there. Well, well, well said, Terry. I, I, I didn't see the first wave, but I heard it was terrific. I, I've heard great things about Attica and Ascension. I don't know what Writing with Fire is, though. That, that was like the, the nominee this year. That was completely not on my radar. Okay, let's move on to the last uh, category we're going to cover in this morning's nominations is Best International Feature. Uh, Drive My Car, 
one of four nominations. It's it's very much this year's Parasite. Uh, also, again, well, looky here, Flea, here you go. The Hand of God from Italy, uh, Lunana from Bhutan, and The Worst Person in the World from Norway. I got to say, I saw all of these international features. They're all great. Uh, I actually think uh, the one that I enjoyed the most in terms of just enjoying was The Worst Person in the World, but I think the most deserving to win is Drive My Car. Jeff, what's your take on international feature? Competitive for sure. Drive My Car is probably the front runner since it has the Best Picture nomination and, and you know, directing and writing nods. But I thought The Worst Person in the World was absolutely fantastic. I loved all the performances in that, the writing, the direction, the music. Uh, I would love to see that pull off an upset, even though I think it's probably a long shot. Perry? I got a little catching up to do in this category, <laughs> but I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't mind seeing Drive My Car take it, of course. And it does feel like the front runner. I don't know. I always just consider the possibility that, you know, sometimes it being nominated in Best Picture as well could mean folks look at it there and vote for it there. And maybe that will give the worst person in the world a little more attention in the international fe feature category specifically. But I don't know. It feels like Drive My Car is going to take this, no doubt. Well, uh, I got to say, I just had the best time watching the Oscar nominations this morning. And I had the best time uh, talking about these uh, snubs and surprises. I mean, this is we've, really what makes doing this show so much fun. We've got a little homework before we sign off here because, oh my God, I just am going to thank everybody who is here. What we Guys, we have a huge audience right now. So thank you to everybody watching, but also big thanks to anybody who has given us some support right now via Super Chats. I'm just going to say we've got Rudio here. Thank you so much. Mabs is in the house. Much appreciated, my friend. Jarrett is here as well. Thank you so, so much for the support. We've got George, too. So much Kristen Stewart love. And you know how much I love seeing that. If we missed any of your Super Chats, have no fear. I will either get to it on Merry Hour later this week, or maybe we'll revisit we got a lot of uh, we've got a lot of Academy Award conversations coming your way. We got another six or seven weeks of this show. So <laughs> yes, we do. Yes, we do. Now, hold we, on to the super chats. Now we may have touched a little on who we think is going to win. We, you know, we did some predicting about who's going to win the Academy Awards, but of course, we're really going to get into it now that we know who the nominees are in upcoming episodes of FYC right here on Perry's channel. So thank you to everyone, not only for joining us. But like Perry said, everyone who joins us live for this morning's nominations, we're live right now. I could get like, you know, a hit by a plane and you would see it happen live. Or I could take out my guitar. Perry could take out her saxophone and we could just jump into an FYC jam. Jeff being the lead singer. But we're not going to do that. We're going to spare you. But thank you so much for joining us on FYC. Make sure you share this link. You share the show across your social media platforms with other movie fans so they can get our take on this morning's nominations. Uh, this has just been such a great, great morning and a great season so far, season four for FYC. Please join us next time on FYC. And until then, FY, see you later. And now I'm present.